G'day mate, how you going? My name's Dan and welcome to the Green and Gold Life. Here we are out the front on my uh, Tiff Tough Bermuda grass. And uh, look, I've got to tell you, it's looking a little bit so-so. <laughs> Basically, I'll let it go because we've had such a mild summer. And uh, look, my theory is the Pommies bought it to help out with their ashes campaign, but uh, <laughs> mate, that's not going according to plan, eh hey, boys? <laughs> anyway, um, it's sort of, because we're having such a mild summer, it's not really getting the temperatures at once for, for growth. So it's throwing up a whole bunch of seed head. And uh, yeah, it's not really helping the aesthetic of the lawn. So what I'm doing at the moment is trying to bring up the height of cut. I'm aiming for about that 25 mil mark because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come through with my Massey and knock it back down to about 16 or something. Um, and then sort of with a little mini red oak, reset the height of cut, dig out all of the, um, all of the seed head stalks, all of that. And then once it's fully recovered, apply some PGR. Uh, that way we can try and suppress some of these seed heads and uh, try and have a decent summer at turf. Anyway, you would have noticed at the title of this video, I reckon we got some uh, some dollar spot. Let's jump down and have a look, eh? Ha <laughs> rightio. So, mate, I thought I'd just fire up the old two-stroke broom real quick and get rid of a few of the leaves. So, um, yeah, sometimes it's hard seeing the forest through the trees or the uh, disease through the seed head. <laughs> so, I thought I'd just get them out of the way so we can see what we're doing. So, here's me dollar spot here. Um, there's a patch here and there's sort of some in behind you and, and other spots there. So. How do I really know that I've got dollar spot? Well, there were a few indicators um, that I'd noticed uh, about two or three weeks ago. And uh, the first of all was mycelium. So first thing in the morning, I'd come out here and have a little bit of a bow peep at me deck. And uh, there'd be like a, a spots of mycelium when there's dew around. Now this mycelium will generally go away once the, once the dew's gone and like full sun hits it. But uh, yeah, that was the first indicator. Second indicator is you get these little brown patches, like the size of a dollar coin, that's how it gets its name. And uh, yeah, they, they sort of started to develop and what do you know, you got dollar spots. So that's sort of how I knew I had it. <laughs> Rightio, so there's a few environmental conditions we need to be aware of that are real conducive for dollar spot. So uh, number one are those, like those cool mornings where you get like a dew across your lawn and then uh, it'll warm up to like to be a cracking day, anywhere between like that 16 and 28 degrees. That's, that's sort of been my weather pattern here for at least the last two, two and a half months up here in the Radelaide Hills. So um, I'd say that's been my number one cause here today. Uh, number two would be like poor soil drainage or air circulation, that, that doesn't help. Uh, excess thatch, that sort of thing. Um, if you've got nitrogen deficiencies in your turf as well, so, um, it just lowers the turf's resistance to disease if it's not flush with nitrogen. So um, just make sure you keep furred up and, uh, and dry spots as well. So that's what I'm suffering from here as well. I reckon that's the second cause I've got here today. So the reason I've got dull spot here today is uh, yeah, those dewy mornings and uh, a little bit of dry spot. So what are some of the preventative methodologies we can use here at home as domestic turf curators? Number one, and probably the most effective, is going to be a preventative fungicide. So we can apply that to our turf and it becomes systemic in the plant and it helps fight off disease and all that sort of stuff. So that's probably our number one. Number two is equally as important as, uh, as curators and that's correct cultural practice. So uh, the first one would have to be water in the morning. We want to water in the morning uh, probably once or twice a week depending on your turf variety and, and how warm your weather is, all of that sort of stuff. Um, we want to water nice and long and slow and deep. That way it gives the, uh, the leaf blade a chance to dry out. Whereas if we were to water at night, the, the water droplets would actually remain on the plant. It'd stay wet overnight and it's just more conducive for disease. So water low and slow in the morning and it'd be sweet. Another one would have to be uh, mowing with sharp mower blades and mow regularly. So when we do mow our lawns, yes, we stress it out a little bit. But if we haven't got sharp blades, what we end up doing is tearing or cutting the leaf blade. And uh, it's just got to spend more energy on repairing itself and stressing it out even more. And it's just more chance for a fungus to get in there and, and infect our lawns. So make sure we're mowing regularly with a nice sharp blade. Number three would be uh, increased air circulation. So we can do that by removing thatch, grooming, scarifying, verticutting, whatever you've got to do to, re uh, to reduce our thatch. And the last one, if you're super committed, is to probably go around and knock the dew off in the morning. But uh, mate, I haven't got time for that, mate, eh? So, um, yeah, rightio, let's get on with it, eh?
missed that bloody. Right, yo, so you would have noticed throughout the mowing, I was doing it with the catcher on. That's essentially to try and minimize the spread of the disease across the turf. So what I did is I started off on uh, my healthy section and then moved into the infected section. So if you can, do your best to try and limit the spread. So let's talk now about what we can put on our turf to knock it out. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind would be say like a mancozeb from Bunnos. They do it at the big green shed, so you can pick some up there. Or uh, you can look at maybe say some propiconazole, which is uh, something like a Banamax. They're both adept at removing dollar spot. What I do want to try today though, is some liquid copper. So I do want to preface this by saying that um, Yates do not list uh, any turf varieties uh, in their label, nor do, they nor do they say it can knock out dollar spot, any of that. So I've done a little bit of reading and uh, I've been told that liquid copper can knock out dollar spot. So we're gonna give that a trial here today to see how we go. So we have had the last four or five days of really warm weather, sort of above that 30 mark. And I'm kind of hoping that's really knocked out most of the spurs of the disease. But what I wanna to do today is just give this a whirl and see if we can't knock it, man. Cause I did notice a little bit more mycelium this morning. So we're gonna give it our best and see how this goes. Otherwise I can follow up with a manka zeb after that. Let's do it. I'll be going out at an application rate of about 30 mil per 100 meter squared. So for me, that's gonna be 15 because I've only got uh, 50 meters out the, out the front. So uh, I've got about two liters of water in the tank as well. Let's put it down. Okay, so if I had my time again, I would have actually mowed yesterday and uh, made the foliar application today. I say that because Yates don't actually provide any recommendations on the label. So they don't recognize liquid copper as a, uh, as a fungicide preventative for turf. So uh, to play it safe, I should have mowed yesterday, allowed the turf to heal, and then made the foliar application today. So this is gonna be a foliar application, so don't water it in. Um, if you are going to apply, apply it um, miles before any rain, and don't let the kids on it until it's dried out, kids and pets and that sort of thing. So just read the label, there's a few do's and don'ts on there. The, the main one for me is actually they say, don't apply it to a plant that's under moisture stress. So I do have a dry spot there, and uh, that's right where my dollar spot is, so I am actually going to have to apply today. So um, we're just gonna have to watch this space, man, but please read the label, um, check the application rates, all of that sort of stuff. Right, yeah, let's do it. You beauty, there we go. So we got our copper out nice and evenly. So I made sure to go two directions, north, south, and east, west. That way um, you get a nice even coverage and you're not missing anything. So you're trying to cover all of those spores that create the disease so she's not coming back, man, so we can knock it out. Um, Yates have nominated a re-entrant period of waiting till it dries. So we just need to wait till the chemical dries on the leaf before we let the kids and pets back out. But uh, on a day like this, man, that's probably within the hour. So um, yeah, but. Just keep that in the back of your mind. I do want to preface this by saying as well, Yates do not uh, nominate lawn or lawn disease on their label. So um, what we'll do is we'll come back in uh, a week or two weeks time and see how we got on with the application. Rightio, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You guys do me a wicked man favor and take it easy. I'll chat you on.